morning. Good morning. Welcome to our worship service this morning where we will be celebrating the sacrament of baptism and baptizing beautiful Dawson Joseph Draper who's here today. And we are so welcoming of all of Dawson's family that have gathered here so that they can be witness to this beautiful sacrament. And to all those others who have joined us for worship today, we are glad to see you. And we are so happy to be here on this glorious day in this beautiful place. This place is one that First Nations people have walked on for thousands of years. And their relationship with this land and this place is at the center of their lives and spirituality. We gather to worship and witness within the boundaries of Treaty 18 of 1818, and this is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg, Haudenosaunee, Tanatate, and Wendat peoples, and home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples as part of an intricate nationhood that reaches across Turtle Island. We acknowledge their stewardship of this land throughout the ages, and our desire to seek a new relationship with the indigenous peoples of this land one based on honor and deep respect. Our hearts are full with this knowledge as we gather here in this sacred place on this sacred day to celebrate this sacred sacrament. We are here with all that we are, as all that we are. And so we gather and we share our life and work and our joys and our sorrows as a people of God in community. So one thing that didn't make the bulletin this week that I want to remind our worship and music committee is that we do have a meeting this Wednesday evening. What time does that meeting start, Barb? Seven o'clock. There we go. So if you're on our worship and music team or just want to come and see what we do, this is where the magic happens. We get together and you end up with amazing worship services. It's lots and lots of fun and we're going to have some on Wednesday night. Some other things that are happening this week. Uh, tomorrow evening, the ministerial is gathering at the administration building for the council meeting. And if anyone would like to come and stand with us as we address the council about affordable housing in our municipality, uh, we're gathering at 5.30 tomorrow to make that stand. Uh, there's also a movie night this week. So on Friday, we're gonna be gathering, not in the sanctuary here, but in the round room. So it's a movie in the round. In the round room just behind here, we're gonna set up a screen and a projector and watch together Little Women, the newest one. At least I think it's still the newest one. I was able to find it on the streaming service that we have so that we can watch it together. And we'll have popcorn and pop and all those kinds of fun things. And then next week, we're gonna have book sharing for all those readers. The fun thing is, is that, of course, Little Women was also a book, so we have a little bit of a theme going on. Uh, but for those readers, uh, it's June 13th, that's a Tuesday at seven, here at the church, we're gonna meet in person to talk about what books we've been reading and give people ideas for what books they might like to read as we head into the summer. Yay! Uh, some things upcoming, just to remind people, um, next Sunday, uh, we'll worship in the morning and then in the afternoon, the choir and I are gonna go over to McIntyre where there's a United Church there that has a yearly service and we're going to worship there. But in New Lowell, they're celebrating their 150th anniversary of being a church in the community of New Lowell. So if you, uh, won't, if you want to go over there and worship with them, I won't be offended. So you can check that out. They have some posts on Facebook and around about what time their service is and what they're going to be doing over there in New Lowell. So it's very exciting for that United Church as well. Okay. Are there other announcements and like and work, things we're doing that I should bring to your attention? Oh. I have a joy that I would like to share this morning. 
Um, a week ago Saturday, seven of us from Centennial Congregation made the trip to Port Elgin and to go to the United Church Western Ontario Waterway Conference. And that is where Jennifer was inducted as the new president. It was a lovely service and uh, we were pleased to be able to take Jennifer and the girls out for a meal afterwards. So today, Jennifer, the, um, the congregation have a small gift for you and uh, to tell you that we're very proud of you and to thank you for the contribution that you make to the United Church of Canada and to the Centennial Congregation. Um, we wish you all the best over the next two years and God's blessing. We light this candle, remembering that God created light. The Savior loved light, and the Spirit's light shines through each one of us. There is room for all of our joys and sorrows, and for every one of us in this light. So let it shine. I invite you to join with me in our call to worship. For God, creator, divine, current, holy energy, so loved, born of compassion, mercy, and true love, the world, not just one individual or species, one faith or denomination, one continent or culture, that God gave freely, unconditionally, to mend, tend, and transform God's only Son, Jesus the Lord, Rabbi, Savior, and Friend, not 
not to condemn, not to judge, not to punish, not to penalize, but that the world might be saved through him. The world, the whole world, every creature, culture, and corner, transformed through unconditional, compassionate love. God so loved the world, and so we come to worship God. And in doing so, enter into the work of God's transformative, compassionate purpose. Let us pray. O God, who makes us a reflection of the Trinity, gather us as Christ's body, unite us in worship by your Spirit, Show us how our diversity expands the opportunities for us to be creators of goodness. Make us more aware of what it means to live in your image. Then send us out, please, Holy Trinity, to reflect your unity and your diversity. For you are our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be in thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. So let us sing the first and fourth verses of number 315, Holy, Holy, Holy. Wonderful. 
look at you. You got your water? Hannah's hands were so cold. She maybe should have given them some. Oh, that's perfect. That's feeling really nice and warm. How about you? Keeping it nice and warm? Let's sit up here. Yeah, be careful of those handles, right? Yeah. Hi. Morning, Dawson. Yeah. And I didn't get your name when we were getting into church. What was it? Jordan. Wonderful. Good to have you here, Jordan. And you're Dawson's cousin, right? Very nice. Yeah, find a good comfy spot. That's perfect. Yes, Dawson. That's excellent. I was wondering about, that's what I do up here. I just wonder. I was wondering, what are some of the things that you like to create? What do you create? Do you build with Lego? You do? Yeah. Do you draw or paint? Do you? <laughs> oh, do you think Esme's got warmer hands than you, Joe? Do you create warm water by warming up your hands? Yeah, are you? That's good. Do you, anybody here bake? Do you create any baking? I know you three do. I've seen your baked goods that you brought. I know Neela does. Do you do any baking? Oh, you do go, Dawson. Yeah, you do some baking. It's fun, isn't it? Well, that's creating, isn't it? What about knitting or quilting or writing stories? Do you do any of that? Yes. You read stories a lot. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, do you know that our Bible reading for this morning is about God creating? Did you know God was a creator too? Just like you? God created. What do you think God created? Have you read this one, Amelia? I bet you have, okay? What did God create? In the beginning? Um, he the light. The light, yeah. The heavens and the earth. The earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep. Well, a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. Exactly. And there was light the first day. Yeah. And there's seven whole days of things that God created. What else did God create? God created the light. The animals, absolutely. What about the waters in the sky, right? And separated them? And the plants, the animals and the plants? Uh, what are some other things? The moon and the sun and the stars. Yeah, night and day. The clouds, for sure. Yes, all of the things that swim in the sea. All the fish in the lakes and rivers. So many things God created, right? And all birds, right? Creatures of every kind. And God also created us, right? Yes. God created us. Isn't that amazing? And God created and put a little bit of God in everything God made. So that whenever we see it, we are reminded of God, right? And we can see a little bit of God. And not just like whenever all the things that we create have a little bit of us in them. And they, we can see ourselves in the things we make, right? Well, everyone has water from creation that we're going to use now to create the water for our baptism. And when it all swirls together, it creates something new that shows God's love and care for a little Dawson, who we're going to baptize. So, is everybody ready to get creating and share our love? Yeah? Good. Okay, keep it warm. We're going to call up Dave and Dot, the rest of Dawson's family for our service of baptism. And if you want to just, yeah, I think over here would be all right if you all want to slide over there. And then we'll stand up and we'll stand up over here. Does that sound good? Come on up. We've got Dawson's mom and dad. We've got the godparents. If, if godparents might want to 
stand up just right over here. So that would be great. Perfect. And we've got our chair of our board coming up too. So the sacrament of baptism proclaims and celebrates the grace of God. A little child, having done nothing to earn the love of God, is nonetheless welcomed and embraced by the living waters of God's love in today's sacrament. Because this little child doesn't have to do anything to earn God's love. It's freely given always, and at the very moment, you can dance. By water and the Spirit, we are called, claimed, and commissioned. We are called God's own, welcomed as children of God, we're claimed by Christ, united with Christ, united with one another, and the Christian community over all time, and in every place, we are commissioned to Christ's ministry of love, peace, and justice, and strengthened by the Holy Spirit for the work of the church. Through scripture, we are assured that in welcoming this child into our community of faith in the name of Christ, we welcome Christ and the one who sent him. So, I invite Dave to present our candidate for baptism. On behalf of the Congregation of Centennial United Church in Stainer, I present the following child for initiation into the body of Christ through baptism. Dawson Joseph Draper, son of Daryl and Stephanie Draper. So I ask Dawson's parents, do you desire Dawson to be baptized? Do you believe in the love of God, the presence of Christ, and the power of the Holy Spirit? We do. Will you, throughout your living, seek to teach him God's love for all creation? We will, with God as our helper. Will you seek to grow with your child in Christ-like loving kindness, so that in the fullness of time, Dawson may affirm the faith of his baptism? We will, with God as our helper. Will you honor your child as a beautiful gift from God, giving him the foundation for self-esteem and the wisdom to esteem others? We will with God as our helper. And from the godparents, recognizing that many people nurture and influence the life of this child, will you support this child and his parents on life's journey? We will with God as our helper. Will you grow in love with this child, trusting that you are not alone. You live in God's world. You will with God as your helper. And I invite the congregation to stand as we make a congregational commitment to this child. We have heard the will of Daryl and Stephanie. We receive Dawson Joseph Draper in Christ's name as we ourselves have been received. We all belong to the one household of the faith of Jesus Christ. Will you welcome, support, and nurture this family with your love and prayers? We will, God be our helper. So let us make a profession together of our common faith that connects us to each other and to all those in the body of Christ who will journey with this family in all the places they go. Even when we ourselves are not present, they will never be alone or separated from love. For we believe we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is created, who has come and teaches the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. I forgot to do that the last half of the it's good. So long and so patiently, but we're gonna. Are you ready to pour some water? Yes. All right. Come on over here. I'm gonna take the lid off of our baptismal font. I think we're gonna start. Right, sit down here. Yeah. Good. As the water is 
its ward. You can. We recall the crashing waters of creation, ordered by the Spirit's breath, how good it is. As the water is poured, we recall the parting waters of the sea of reeds, channeled to a life made new, how good it is. Not another one. As the water is poured, we recall the living water, given to us freely and without end, through Christ who makes us whole, how good it is. Did we get all of them? something new, the waters of baptism. Here is a beginning. Here is freedom. Here is life. May God's spirit be upon us and these waters of daily use, which we now use to baptize and to welcome. Amen. Oh. 
together number 444, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise.
Let us pray. Loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So as uh, Marilyn said when she came up this morning, last weekend I was at the Regional Council Spring Meeting for Western Ontario Waterways, where I was installed as President of the Region. It was a pretty exciting time for me, not just because of my new role, although that was part of it, mixed in with a little good old-fashioned fear, of course. It's a big job with a lot of responsibility, and I think you probably noticed I already have a pretty big job with a lot of responsibility. But I also found last weekend exciting because the theme for the regional meeting was dreaming dreams. And if you know me at all, you've figured out that I am a pretty big dreamer. I am filled up to overflowing with dreams for myself, dreams for my family, dreams for this church, dreams for the wider church, dreams for the community, dreams for the world. I love dreaming dreams. Whether it's a dream about getting back to hosting a movie night, don't forget about the one this Friday, or a dream about finding ways to get more affordable housing in Clearview. Don't forget about the ministerials presenting the letter to the council. Or a dream about planting a garden for pollinators and helping to save our planet one small step at a time on June 18th, Father's Day Sunday, the Sunday school's gonna be out there planting flowers all around our sign on the lawn. I love to dream. Maybe that's why I love this story of creation that's in our lectionary reading for today. Because to me, creation is God's dream. Out of a formless void, God dreamed that there would be light, and there was light, and it was good. It was very good. Of course, the problem with my dreaming is that I'm like, God, when I dream of something, it doesn't just happen so that I can rejoice and declare it good. In the course of my dreaming dreams, more often than not, I run into roadblocks and my hope-filled balloon gets popped. I come crashing down to reality. At the regional meeting, we celebrated over a dozen ministries within our region who have completed the process of becoming an affirming ministry within the United Church of Canada, which means they are public, intentional, and explicit in their welcoming of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, intersexual, asexual, two-spirited people, of all people, in their diversity and wonder. It was this hope-filled recognition of what can be, and I dreamed of what it would be like if every congregation in our region could become a vermin. What can I say? I like to dream big. Then, on Tuesday morning, on the news, I heard that York Catholic School Board of Trustees had voted against raising a pride flag at schools in their region. And Wednesday, I heard there's a movement to keep kids home from school on June 1st as a way to protest pride. <coughs> I came crashing back down to reality. In the face of reality, it's not easy to stay afloat. <coughs> but when I think about what helps me most when I have dreams and want them to become a reality so bad I can almost taste it. <clears throat> it struck me that that happens because I am not alone in my dream. It is a community of people willing to dream with me that give me the strength to keep dreaming and to keep working to realize my dreams, whatever they are. Whether it's in my parenting, being able to turn to others and lean on them for support and wisdom and rides to work when I've forgotten I have a meeting, or to rearrange a board meeting when a piano recital gets scheduled for the same night. Uh, remember how we were going to meet on June 22nd? Yeah. <laughs> that girl. So, oh, 
I know that as a young parent, when my children were Dawson's age, it was even more essential to my survival and well-being to have a community of people surrounding me and lifting me up whenever I came crashing down to the ground when things weren't as dreamy and as wonderful as I thought they should have been. Whether it was my dream of them sleeping through the night, or my dream they would eventually be potty trained. I know from what Stephanie shared with me leading up to today that she too has been held and supported by family and friends who pitched in in loving partnership to uphold their dreams of family life that balances work and play, bringing joy and safety. The way we offer our services online even allow them to realize their dream of a church family despite the realities of COVID and schedules that might have brought them crashing down. And so here we are, joining that community of love and support that surrounds this family today. What struck me this week as I was pondering the readings for this Sunday and the fact that it's Trinity Sunday is that if you really believe in the Trinity, even when it's hard to fully comprehend, you know God's dream was realized in community too. That there before anything was, there was a community, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That it was through the Spirit's breath and the love of Christ that God's dream became a reality, that there was light, and it was good. We don't have to ever feel bad about not being able to do things on our own. If we can't pull ourselves up by our own bootstraps, if we need help all the time, we don't have to feel bad about that. Our God showed us from the very beginning, three in one, that this is the way it was supposed to be. This is the only way it can be. That here in community is how our dreams flourish and grow into a reality. That it is together that we create love and light here and now. When we are one, it is good. It is very, very good. So, let us go from this place and this day with our eyes filled with stars and our hearts filled with dreams, knowing that we do not go alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. So it is we sing of this beautiful creation that inspires us in all our dreaming. Will you join with me in singing 291, All Things Bright and Beautiful.
individuals and into this community. And the one who brings warmth, hope, and love. In gratitude for the one at work in our lives, we present our offering this day. If you didn't get a chance to put your offering in the plate at the back of the church when you came in this morning, just raise your hand as Dave comes forward. He will pick it up from you. We're going to sing together our offertory hymn number 542. If you put your own. May our prayers surround all those on our hearts and minds with grace, that they might always know that they are never alone in any of it. We offer these prayers and these lives, this time and this people, in the hope of creating new life in the midst of your creation, O God. So we pray. And so now we sing, and it is good. Number 236, now thank we all our God. Thank <laughs> you. 
So let us go forth with the blessing of God, Creator, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let the three in one strike a single harmonious chord in our souls that keeps us creating love and life in all our living. Amen.